When we have to depend on ourselves for our own financial well-being, financial confidence is not just a luxury, but it's an absolute necessity for navigating financial planning and being able to jump on different opportunities that may present themselves. Especially in the beginning, when we start managing our own money, some things aren't super straightforward. We don't learn the practical skills of financial planning in school, at least I didn't. We don't always know if we're doing things correctly, so sometimes we just don't do them. But this is where financial confidence comes in. Today, I'm going to share why financial confidence is so important and also five tangible actions we can take to build our financial confidence. Hi everyone, my name is Carly. I work as a PM in tech. I also work as a model in the city. On this channel, I talk all things personal finance, modeling, and lifestyle. If you're interested in any of those types of videos, please subscribe to this channel and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. Financial confidence is important because when you're confident with your financial knowledge, you feel empowered to make decisions. You take action when it comes to your financial future instead of taking a more passive stance and letting things happen to you. When you know what you're optimizing for, you have a better sense of what steps to take to get there. For me, I have always felt less stress when I take a more active approach in managing my finances because when I'm on top of managing my money, I don't have the element of the unknown as much. The first thing you'll want to do is make sure that you have a solid grasp on financial literacy concepts. This includes, but is not limited to understanding the importance of investing and knowing how to take the steps to do so. Also knowing that the earlier you start, you'll set yourself up better financially long-term. Knowing the importance of credit scores, interest rates, etc. I talk more about these ideas in my video on a beginner's guide to financial literacy, which you can control click and open up in a new tab here. When you have a strong sense of financial literacy, you have so much more confidence around knowing that you can make the best financial decisions for yourself for long long-term wealth. This puts you so far ahead of the average American, which according to a nerd wallet survey in January, showed that three quarters of Americans say they do not feel confident about their personal finances for 2023. The economic landscape is constantly changing. There's a lot that's out of our personal control, but there are also specific actions that we can take to set ourselves up as best as we can with the knowledge that we have cultivated. That brings me to my next point, which is goal setting. For me, it's always been easiest to build financial confidence if I have a specific goal in mind. As I have started working towards my goals and I achieve different milestones, knowing that I have set these goals and I have the ability to achieve them have definitely built my financial confidence. I've literally proven to myself that I have the capability to achieve these milestones. In having these goals, I've also been able to prioritize my lifestyle so that I can do whatever it takes to achieve those milestones. Sometimes that might mean adjusting my lifestyle temporarily, maybe being more intentional about my choices, making sure that I am educating myself about all of the possible options and trade-offs out there. One thing that will help you is using a framework to set SMART goals. This stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound goals. One tangible example of this might be, say, like I want to save $100,000 for a down payment on a house in the next three years. The goal of saving $100,000 is clearly measurable because you can track your progress as you save money over time. It's achievable because saving $100,000 for a down payment makes sense based on presumably your current income, expenses, and saving habits. It's important to set a goal that is realistic and within your financial means. Obviously it's relevant because you want to buy a home in the future and want to secure financing with a solid down payment. Finally, it's time bound because your deadline is in the next three years. So when you set SMART goals, this financial goal becomes a clear and actionable target that provides direction and motivation for your saving efforts. Other examples of SMART goals might be, I want to say pay off $10,000 of credit card debt in the next 12 months, or I want to increase my retirement savings by $200 each month. It could be worth setting short-term and medium-term goals to help in achieving your long-term goals. As you start ticking off goals on your list, either slowly or quickly, depending on how big these goals are, you're going to build your confidence in this area. You're also going to learn more about yourself and how to make yourself successful. You're going to have a whole list of financial successes under your belt that you've achieved and now you have experience in. I think knowing that we've taught ourselves these things in the past will give us the confidence to learn anything in the future. If you're starting from zero, then work on building your emergency fund savings account to three to six months of expenses. I say this in almost every single one of my personal finance videos, but this is such an important point. And honestly, I don't think I can say this enough. 
Knowing that you have some buffer to fall back on in case there is an unexpected expense is so important for peace of mind. We also build independence with an emergency fund because we're less likely to depend on loans, either from credit cards or family and friends. We're going to be able to make decisions with a clear mind because we don't have the stress of financial instability over our heads. Rather, we've already prepared for this financial instability by setting up our emergency fund. Through that, we're able to build confidence because we have already shown ourselves that we are able to plan for the unexpected that may come up. And we've just got our own back. The more we stick to our financial goals, the more we will learn along the way and the more confidence that we will build. In working towards our goals and building financial confidence, it's inevitable that we will face setbacks and challenges. The market may shift against our favor. Prices of items that we regularly buy will increase, as we've seen more recently. These factors outside of our control will sometimes cause us to take longer to achieve our goals. When we build resilience in the face of these setbacks, for me, it builds a sense of confidence that we can continue working on our goals despite these setbacks. And in doing so, we develop the discipline to do exactly that. We might also make mistakes along the way, which is fine. I've made plenty of mistakes, but I've also given myself grace because it's all a learning process for me. At the end of the day, it's my own life and it's my lifestyle on the line. It's on me to learn from these mistakes and make myself better. When you've achieved something, maybe a short-term or medium-term goal, I think it's so important to take the time to celebrate it and recognize your progress. When we take the time to acknowledge that we have accomplished something important, we gain confidence because we've achieved at least one goal, regardless of how big or small. In my mind, there's no reason why we can't to do it another time or another time or many more times. The celebration doesn't have to be extravagant, right? Or maybe if it's a big goal that you achieved, it can be extravagant. But I still think it's important to pat ourselves on the back. I see you, you see me, and let's push ourselves forward with this new confidence that we've built. Financial confidence empowers us to make decisions that will set us up for the future. We can build financial confidence by building our financial literacy, setting smart goals, building our emergency fund, being persistent, and building resilience through setbacks and also by celebrating our achievements. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you need help with saving money for your emergency fund, you should check out this video on how to save money with an abundance mindset.